This is final review part two video, going through all the problems on the final review quiz part two uh, that we were given in mom or in class. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you have a copy of that in front of you because I won't be displaying all of the questions on screen. First one, we are given a graph and we're asked to find some limits. So, first one is limit as x approaches negative 1 and then the little negative sign in the exponent indicates from the left. So we want to take a journey getting to negative 1 from the left um, so we would need the left hand side so we're going to follow this line till we get to negative 1 and the uh, value that the y value that matches up when we get close to negative 1 uh, would be 2. For the second one, um, we're getting to negative 1 but from the right now. So we're going to use the right graph, go to negative 1, and the y value that matches up is negative 1. Now the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x doesn't exist because from the left it's 2 and from the right it's negative 1. Now f of negative 1 is an entirely different question. Um, that one's just asking what is the value of y when x is negative 1. So when x is negative 1 uh, the value of y would be positive 1 because that's where the closed dot is there. Alright, number 2 we are asked to uh, find the limit as x approaches 4 of x squared minus 2x minus 8 over x minus 4. So the first thing you always try with limits is just plugging in the value but I can see that if I plug 4 in the denominator I get 0. So I have to try something else. And the next logical thing to try here would be factoring. So this is going to be x minus 4 and x plus 2. We see that the x minus 4's can divide out and I'm just left with the limit as x approaches 4 of x plus 2. So again, we can try plugging it in. 4 plus 2 is 6. <clears throat> Number 3 is another graph, so I'm going to bring that in. All right, it wants to know... Um, the value where f of x has a horizontal tangent. Um, now there's actually, there could be more than one, so it should say values. But for a horizontal tangent, we're looking where we're going to draw the tangent line and it's going to be flat. Uh, like right here at negative 4, if I draw a tangent there, it's horizontal. So negative 4 is one of my answers. And this happens again uh, right here. We get a horizontal tangent line, and that's at 7. Number 4 is another uh, graph problem. We want to um, match the derivative of this function um, with the graph of the function. So all you have to do is uh, think about what the tangent lines are doing. So along here, uh, on the left side here, where I'm drawing in yellow, my tangent lines are all negative. So that means, uh, and then at, at, at negative 2, of course, it's at 0. So on, on the side here, I'm going to start graphing this. So it's negative until I get to negative 2. 
And what happens there, it's zero, and then it starts to become uh, positive. So it's going up until we get to one. So here's one. And yeah, let me straighten this out a little bit. Should be more parabola-like. And at one, we see that our tangent lines are gonna be, the slope of the tangent lines, I should be clear about that. So here from negative two to one, the slope of the tangent lines is uh, positive. And then uh, the slope of the tangent lines are negative from one on. So we're gonna go negative again. So the derivative of our graph is looking like a parabola that's opening down and that would be the third option um, from your My Open Math worksheet or My Open Math assignment. Finding derivatives. We have f of x is 6x squared minus 5x minus 36. So the derivative is pretty cut and dry. The 6 times 2 makes it a 12. Subtract 1, we just get x. And then this would be a 1, so it's minus 5, and then x to the 0 is just 1. So negative 5 times 1, or times, yeah, times 1, or just negative 5. And then the 36 just becomes a 0. So we get negative 12, oops, not a negative. And we just get 12x minus 5. Number six, we want to find the derivative of negative eight square root of x plus nine over x to the six. Let's change it up and make it negative eight x to the one half power plus nine x to the negative six. And then we can use our power rule. So it's going to be negative four x to the negative one half minus 54 x to the negative seven. Now you can rewrite this as negative 4 over the square root of x minus 54 over x to the 7th. Either one of those answers is fine. Let f of x be 8x plus 5 minus 11e to the x then the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x at a point 0, negative 6 is given by y equals mx b, and we need to find m and b. So let's start with the derivative. That's going to be 8 minus 11 e to the x. <clears throat> so if I plug 0 into that, I get 8, or I, yeah, I get 8 minus 11 e to the 0, which is 8 minus 11 equals negative 3. This means that my slope at 0, negative 6 is negative 3. Now we just have to find b. So y is negative 6. x is 0, so 0 times negative 3 plus b. Well, that gives us b equals negative 6. So m equals negative 3, b equals negative 6. <clears throat> Number 8. Suppose a product's revenue function is given by r of q equal to negative 3q squared plus 900q. Find an expression for the marginal revenue function, simplify it, and record your result in the box below. Be sure to use the proper variable in your answer. Marginal revenue just means take the derivative. So it's going to be minus 6q plus 900. Easy peasy. 
Number nine, we're using the product rule. So we have three x to the ninth minus six x to the fifth times six e to the x minus seven. Derivative of the first would be 27 x to the eighth minus 30 x to the fourth. Then all of that times the second. We're going to add that to the derivative of the second, which is just 6e to the x, multiplied by the first. And that's how you leave your answer. No need to distribute or FOIL. Number 10 is uh, g of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 5, that whole quantity, times e to the x. If we want the derivative, again, we need to use the product rule. Derivative of the first is 2x plus 3 times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Now note that you can, you can switch that order of these two, or these two to be, for that matter. Um, and then they want you to simplify that one. So both of them have an e to the x. We can take e to the x out, and we're left with 2x plus 3 plus x squared plus 3x minus 5. Combining like terms in that, we get x squared plus 5x minus 2. Number 11, g of x is equal to e to the x over 5 plus 4x. g prime of x, we need the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom, which is just 4, times the top, all over the bottom squared. Now my open math will want you to simplify this so we can take an e to the x out and we're left with 5 plus 4x minus 4 all over the bottom squared, <coughs> which is just ex times 4x, about 1 plus 4x, or 4x plus 1. And the bottom stays the same, 5 plus 4x all squared. Number 12, f of x is equal to 5x plus 8 all to the negative 1 power. We want to find the derivative. This will require the chain rule. So my power still comes down in front, and I still subtract 1. So I get negative 1 times 5x plus 8, that whole quantity to the negative 2. But then I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 5. So I get negative 5 times 5x plus 8 to the negative 2. Thirteen, another chain rule. f of x is equal to 4e to the negative 5x to the seventh power plus 3x to the eighth power. Now, of course, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. But when you have a power other than x, you have to multiply by the derivative of that power. So that quantity would be negative 35x to the 6 plus 24x to the 7th. Be very careful entering that in the computer. You want to make sure that this whole exponent is there. Four.
14 is asking for a dvx of 6 ln of x. Well, the derivative of ln of x is just 1 over x, and we have that 6 there, so it's just 6 over x. Number 15, probably need a whole bunch for. We're given the function f of x equals negative 6x cubed plus 6.39x squared plus 163.5336x minus 7.55. We want to know where it's increasing, decreasing, and where it has a local max. So start with the derivative, which is negative 18x squared, and then 2 times 6.39 is 12.78x, and then plus the 163.533 6. And then negative 7.55, the derivative of that is just 0. Luckily, we can use our calculator program to find the zeros. So we'll set this equal to 0 and solve for x, and we should get two different values. So program quad a is negative 18. B is 12.78, and C is 163.5336. The two values are negative 2.68 and 3.39. We'll need to draw a number line and plot both of those points in the right order. And I'm going to pick a test point before, after, and in between. So negative 3, 0, and 4 will all work. So we want to know it, what f prime of negative 3 is. f prime of 0, well, f prime of 0 is pretty easy. That's just the 163.5336. And f prime of 4. So I'm going to go ahead and go into y equals, and I'm going to put in negative 18x squared plus 12.78x plus 163.5336. Then I'm going to do second graph to get my table. And right now it's not set up for me to put my own values in, so I'm going to go to second window, and instead of Having the independent be auto, I'm going to select ask and then go back to second graph. And I'm going to put negative 3 in, giving me negative 36.81. And I'm going to put 4 in. That's a negative 73.35. So on the interval, the first interval, it's negative. So if the first derivative is negative, then that means the function is decreasing. In the middle, it's positive, so my function is increasing. And then on the end, uh, again, we're negative, so my function's decreasing. So for the first question, is increasing on the open interval. We need more room. Oops. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. So it's increasing in that middle interval, so that would be negative 2.68 to 3.39. It's decreasing. All you need is the endpoint, so from negative infinity to a negative 2.68 for the first blank on your paper or in mom and then it's also 
so it's, well, I'll just write it out. It's negative infinity to negative 2.68, and then also the 3.39 to infinity. So it's going to have a local min or max where you're changing from increasing to decreasing. Um, so we go from, starting from left to right, we're going from decreasing, going down, to increasing. So that's a minimum. But then we go from increasing to decreasing, giving us our max right there where it's changing. So that is happening um, at where the derivative is 0, and that's at 3.39. So there's a max at 3.39. And there's a min at the negative 2.68. Not that you needed that for the problem, but might as well let you know. <coughs> And that's it for that one.